part of the finished product and it can be uh, physically and conveniently traced to it. Right, direct, it can be traced to that product. Direct labor consists of that portion of labor cost that can be easily traced to a product. Right, direct labor has to be directly traceable to a product. Manufacturing overhead consists of all the manufacturing costs other than direct materials and direct labor. These costs include indirect materials that are part of the finished product, but they cannot be uh, easily traced to it, and indirect labor costs that cannot be physically or conveniently traced to the creation of products. Uh, what does all that mean? Well, so you've got the people in the factory that are creating actual, um, you know, products, say a video camera. They're actually in there putting together the components, creating a video uh, camera. So that labor is direct labor. And then you got the, the components, the plastics, the microchips, um, the lenses, uh, all of that, all those materials can be directly traced to a um, a camera, right? So that those are direct labor, direct uh, direct labor, direct materials. Now, on top of that, you got some guy supervising uh, those people. So for every 25 employees uh, that are putting direct labor, you've got one supervisor. Well, you can't uh, easily trace his the cost of that labor. You know what we pay him to supervise. You can't trace that to one product. Um, so. That is an indirect labor cost um, because it, he's going to more than one product. S similar to rent, uh, you know, we're paying uh, for the whole building to manufacture these cameras. Well, I can't trace the cost of that uh, building to just one camera. It's going to all the cameras. Those are indirect costs, manufacturing overhead. Uh, and, and, and secondly, the indirect materials are, are small, uh, usually uh, like screws, uh, nails. Things that it's, it's, it's not even worth it to try and trace because a screw is worth less than one cent. So why even try to directly trace it to a product? You, you know that you're going to use a thousand screws um, in a week. So those thousand screws we're just going to allocate on some rational basis. Uh, and, but we're going to include it in manufacturing over it as indirect materials. All right. Uh, we're we're, we're going to go through a lot of examples of, of that throughout the course. But uh, just to understand those definitions. Uh, now we're going to move uh, directly below th those definitions when we're talking about direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing, overhead. There's a box and it says non-manufacturing costs are costs associated with managing the business and selling products. Non-manufacturing costs, right? That's marketing selling costs. Those costs include all costs necessary to secure customer orders and get the finished product into the hands of the customer. And then there's administrative costs. Those costs include all executive, organizational, and clerical costs associated with the general management of an organization that are not classified as production or marketing or selling costs. All right, so those are all the, the accounting people, the sales people, the uh, customer service people. After you buy the product, um, you know, you're going to want, or, or so to get the, the camera to the store, we're going to need salespeople. You know, they're going to need to sell it to uh, a retailer. That retailer is then going to sell it to you. But say you have a question or there's a warranty, well, the, somebody is going to answer the phone if you have a question. Somebody's going to process the warranty if your, phone, if your camera breaks. Those type of uh, um, costs are non manufacturing costs. They're selling costs, they're administrative costs. Um, down to the bottom left, we'll get into. Um, uh, a flowchart of you know product cost versus period cost, manufacturing versus non-manufacturing cost, um, but that's in one second. Now we're going to get into the exact definitions of of what um, the different components of inventory are. Different component, and I'm talking about inventory on a balance sheet. Yeah, you thought you were done with balance sheets once you got out of manufacturing or financial accounting. Well, uh, some of the stuff from manu uh, from <laughs> financial accounting is going to bleed into managerial accounting. That's why you took f uh, financial accounting first, because some of those concepts, um, definitions, um, all that kind of journal entries, T accounts, balance sheet, that stuff flows into managerial accounting. Uh, yeah, you thought it was all behind you. It was a headache. Uh, it was boring. It was terrible. Well, some of it's going to come back to uh, you know in, in the managerial accounting. Anyway, so we're talking uh, in a manufacturing company. They have inventory on the balance sheet, but the inventory on the balance sheet is broken into three components. What are those components? They're right here, uh, center, bottom, raw materials, work in process, and finished goods. Um, raw materials are the materials used to make the product. Work in process consists of units of the of product that are partially complete, but will require further work to be saleable to customers. Just as it sounds, work in process, it's not done, it's in process. Finished goods, just as it sounds, consists of units of product that have been completed, but not yet sold to customers. So they're finished. They're finished goods. They're completed. All right. So uh, 
the, down here to the bottom left, this is pretty important um, concept to understand this flow chart here. Uh, it's broken up. See, on the very outside, we've got these things called product costs and these things called period costs. All right. So manufacturing costs are product costs, and uh, non-manufacturing costs are period costs. Um, and then so at under manufacturing costs in this bubble or in, in this uh, dashed uh, box, you'll see manufacturing costs. Manufacturing costs, as we went through over uh, in the center here, are direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead. Um, and then we, we talked about the balance sheet inventory classification. Remember, there's raw materials, work in process, finished goods. Well, the flow of manufacturing costs to the balance sheet, because remember, manufacturing costs are direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead. Those flow to the balance sheet as follows. Direct materials go as raw materials inventory. So, uh, you know, throughout the managerial course, you're, you're going to hear the term raw materials and uh, direct materials. They're interchangeable, but understand that direct materials, uh, we talk about direct materials when we're talking about manufacturing, and when we're talking about raw materials, we're talking about the balance sheet. So direct materials go to, uh, direct materials go to raw materials inventory. Then we got direct labor and manufacturing overhead. Direct labor and manufacturing overhead go into work and process inventory. As we uh, are creating a product, right, we're going to take raw materials and we're going to take some direct labor, somebody's going to sit there and create something, and we're going to apply overhead, right? Somehow we're going to take that rent, those screws, and we're going to allocate it to um, a product. Now, how we do how we do that allocation, we're going to get into later, but just understand that somehow we have to attach all these costs to what we're creating. Because, okay, the camera, it consists of, you know, microchips, plastic, screws, uh, lenses, all that stuff. But it also took us some other stuff to build that camera, right? Other costs. And we need to attach costs for, uh, to the camera so that management can monitor how well we're, we're doing with that product. Imagine we're, we're, we only uh, attach the, the cost of the materials to a product. Say it's uh, all the materials that go into this camera or only $100. Well then, you know, if we want to mark up the product, so we could sell it for $200, right? And make a 50% uh, or 100% profit. Well, that $100 isn't necessarily accurate of all of the other costs that it took to create that camera. And so what management does is they apply direct labor. They apply other costs, manufacturing overhead, other costs that went into making that camera to understand that really it didn't only cost $100 to make that camera, it cost $350. And that's why when it gets finally to you, it costs $500 because all these other things, you know, say research and development, uh, you know, rent, um, uh, transportation costs, all these other costs went into the camera and so before you buy it, management attaches all these costs so that they know what to sell it to you at so that they can plan, uh, organize, direct, and control how the organization is doing. Uh, Alright, so let's get back to this chart. We got direct materials, that goes into raw materials, raw materials then goes into work in process, you know what else goes into work in process? Direct labor, manufacturing overhead, and then what happens to work in process? Remember, work in process is stuff that's not completed, well as it gets completed, it goes to finished goods. Right? Because it's been completed. Now, as you see, balance sheet inventory classification, underneath that we have raw materials, work in process, finished goods inventory. Because that is how it shows up on the balance sheet. Manufacturing costs, direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead all go into the inventory uh, component of the balance sheet uh, for, yeah, under these three classifications, raw materials, work process, and finished goods. Now, how does, you know, you guys remember uh, in financial accounting, certain, you know, balance sheet uh, uh, costs get to the income statement somehow, right? That's how our basic accounting equation works. Well, finished good costs, and we're just talking about costs, they get to the <coughs> they get to the income statement through a line up called cost of goods sold, right? So when we sell something, it costs us something to make that product. We recognize that in the income statement as cost of goods sold. And we'll get into this later, how, how well, actually uh, later in this lesson about how we get to that cost of goods sold. But just know uh, raw materials, work in process, finished goods, inventory, that all gets to cost of goods sold. It all gets to the income statement somehow. Now, those are product costs. We attach them to products and they go to cost of goods sold. Product costs go to cost of goods sold. Now we're talking about down below period costs, non-manufacturing costs. 
these are expense during the period incurred. They're not attached to inventory because we can have an overlap of, say, uh, on a given balance sheet date, we have a certain uh, amount of inventory. So those were costs incurred uh, during the period. But uh, if we haven't sold the product, it's going to stay on our balance sheet as uh, an inventory. Well, that, so it's going to go to the income statement as cost of goods sold in a later period. But pre period costs or non-manufacturing costs, marketing and selling administrative costs, they get expensed. They go to the income statement as incurred. They go as, so it's, you know, debit, expense, credit some liability or some asset, cash. You know, we're giving something up, uh, an asset. Uh, you should cash to get something else, but we expense it in the period because it's not going to have a future benefit. So, uh, how this all works, we got product costs, period costs, how do they get to the income statement? Uh, product costs, they go through direct materials, direct labor, uh, manufacturing overhead, raw materials, working process, finished goods, to cost of goods sold, and that's how product costs get to the income statement. Period costs get to the income statement um, through... Uh, as incurred, and they go to sg &A, it was selling uh, general and administrative. You'll see it. Uh, we'll often refer to the, the, the general administrative selling marketing as sg &A. Um, Basically, it's going to be called a lot of things. G&A, uh, selling and marketing costs, sg &A, uh, all, all those. But just understand that all when we're referring to those, um, sg &A, selling general administrative costs, marketing costs, uh, all those are non-manufacturing costs. It's very important, non-manufacturing costs. All right, that was probably a lot, but you can always rewind the tape, watch it again. Now, uh, before we get into variable and fixed costs, let's understand prime costs, conversion costs. So we're in the middle of the concepts definition, right-hand side, prime cost equals direct materials plus direct labor, conversion costs equals direct labor plus manufacturing overhead. Uh, that, that, uh, we're not gonna get into that too much, but it's a definition, or it's a concept that, yeah, just, Understand in case it shows up as a multiple choice on one of your exams, or your professor pref uh, you know, refers to prime cost or conversion cost. This is what it equals. All right, let's get into understanding variable and fixed costs. I've got there's a chart and then there's some graphs. The chart we talk about the definitions, the cost type, variable or fixed, and then in in total, in total variable cost. Total variable costs change as activity levels change. All right, that was up here in the definition. Uh, but on a per unit basis, variable cost per unit remains the same over wide ranges of activities. Uh, we're going to get into examples, but know that variable costs in total change with activities level, but on a per unit basis, they stay pretty much the same. Inversely, fixed costs in total, total fixed cost remains the same uh, even when activity levels change, but per unit, average fixed cost unit goes down as activities level go down. Um, the, the graph better explain this. Okay, take for example the cost of owning a car. All right, the cost of owning a car on this graph, on the first graph, this says variable cost. On the y-axis, we have cost of gas per month. All right, and then on the x-axis we have miles driven. As we drive more miles, the cost of gas goes up. Right, that's a variable cost. Right, the total variable uh, in total the costs change as activity levels change. In this example, miles driven is the activity level, and the cost is the cost of gas per month. As we drive more, our costs go up. A variable cost. Now, a variable cost per unit. Uh, as we say up here, variable cost per unit remains the same over a wide range. Now, in this example, the y-axis is cost of mile of gas, okay? The cost of a mile of gas. And the, the x-axis is miles driven. So, the cost of a mile of gas. Say we get 30